The psalmist says, he, she, who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. That's Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. Then Jesus, in Matthew 11, says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Welcome, in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to this healing service, which I am absolutely confident that the Lord God, through the Holy Spirit, will bring blessing upon blessing to all who step forward in faith. We have all learnt to step back, to let others safely pass, but there's no safety in letting Jesus pass. On the contrary, in these most testing of times, God is telling us, keep close to Jesus. You can and will be blessed at home, viewing this at your chosen time, if in faith you open up to the Holy Spirit. There is no limit in time or space to the healing power of Jesus. And this act of worship has been soaked in prayer since before Christmas. So we're just into 2021. And as the new year spreads out before us, whoever and whatever, whatever is limited in the UK, national and international terms, God's people are never limited in his grace, his mercy and his healing blessings. And all God's people said, Alleluia. So we come now to the first of the songs, which is Singing the Face 367, When I Was Lost, You Came and Rescued Me.
Let us pray. Lord God, you whom the psalmist describes as the Most High, the Almighty, my refuge and my fortress, my God, we want to worship you in all your glory, but we come burdened and certainly needing to confess our sins before we go further. And as we pause to sincerely own those failings, we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us enough to go to the cross to be our holy redeemer. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving us. Please strengthen us to go forward in faith that we might know our security lies in you. Bless you for each other, and may we each reflect your love more fully wherever this week takes or confines us. And this we pray in your precious name. Amen. Gillian asked me to do a talk for young people, but I'm sure the moral of this story applies to all of us. She gave me this particular story because I like these two products that are on the table here. Heinz tomato sauce and Heinz baked beans. I particularly like Heinz baked beans. So what do these two have in common? They're made by a company called Heinz, who have this famous 57 logo on their products. I'm going to tell you about the man who set up this food company. Henry John Hines began helping his mother tend a garden at their house. At 12 years old, he was working on three and a half acres of garden and the produce that he got from there, he took round in a horse and cart to grocery businesses in Pittsburgh. Now Pittsburgh is a city in America in the state of Pennsylvania. He went on to found his own company in 1905, and today it sells over 1,300 products worldwide, including baby foods, which I'm sure a lot of us will have been brought up on. Henry John Hines lived the Jesus way. He was a pioneer. That is, he made things happen. Good things, like looking after the people who worked for him providing extras for them, like swimming pools and gyms for them to exercise in, as well as encouraging Sunday schools in the city of Pittsburgh. When he died, the first part of his will spoke of his love of Jesus and how God had helped him in the easy times and in the hard times. He said how his mother had shown him, through her faith, the right way to live, to love and trust Jesus, and in so doing, to be kind and generous to all people. So when you next eat baked beans or squirt tomato ketchup onto your chips, remember Henry John Hines, and maybe share your chips with whoever is sitting next to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this true story reminds every one of us to take the opportunities we are given, check in with Jesus every day, work hard and be kind and generous to all. Help us to achieve all we can to your glory. Amen. A few weeks back, the Reverend Dave and I decided that an interview during Sunday worship about what the Lord had been doing in my life as regards his healing ministry would be a reminder that there's no stopping God and his purposes. We were all set when Dave fell ill and the Reverend Nicola actually shared the conversation with me in which I offered to pray, socially distanced with a mask on, for anyone in the crush hall at the back. One person stepped forward Let's hear from him now. Well, good morning and um, welcome to uh, another interview here on uh, Virtual Church on PMC. Um, we're back in lockdown, so uh, they've rolled me back out of the cupboard to uh, do some more interviews and uh, meet some really interesting people. And uh, this morning I'm joined by Jason Shaw, 
um, who recently attended, morning Jason, uh, recently attended uh, a meeting at uh, PMC, at which uh, something significant happened. So uh, Jason, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. No problem. It's great to be here. So you came along to a meeting on the, the 30th of December last year. Um, tell us what happened to you at that, at that meeting. Well, um, Gillian got up to um, uh, have an interview with the uh, guest preacher and talk about her healing ministry. Um, she, you know, um, described how she was um, expecting God to do great things and to continue to heal through her ministry. And she described how she was um, praying for people over the telephone and people were uh, getting healed of their you know, various ailments. And um, for me, um, it, it, it was a, a kind of a moment where I, I uh, remember being in church many times in the past and going up for uh, either an altar call or um, to, to ask for prayer. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it wasn't a novel thing to be asked to go up for prayer or for healing, but for me, it was an opportunity I just couldn't miss. Yeah. So you'd, um, obviously, um, what, what were you wanting healing for at the, at the, at the time? Well, you know, I don't think there's any, uh, you know, limit to our needs and, uh, you know, I have lots of needs beside my physical needs, but, uh, on this occasion, um, I had this excruciating pain in my leg, just below my uh, hip joint, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, basically appeared uh, one morning. And uh, it was like, uh, I don't know if you've experienced a dead leg before, but uh, it, it really does uh, make you limp. And I was limping around for uh, a few days and uh, it made sleep very difficult at night. It took me several hours to get to sleep and I was kind of trying to get comfortable in bed. Uh, and um, it really worried me. I was thinking perhaps there'd been uh, some kind of um, uh, thrombosis in my leg, something uh, that uh, was perhaps um, forming a clot and it caused all this pain, but I've never felt anything like it. I was actually prescribed uh, Tramadol right. uh, by the doctor, which is an opioid, which uh, really does, you know, help you sleep and put you to sleep. It's really quite, quite strong sedation. Yeah. But I was quite desperate um, by the time I reached the service on the 13th of December. Yeah. So when you went up for prayer, um, what, what did anything happen on, on the day? Well, um, because of the guidelines, we, we met uh, at the back of the church, Julian and I, mm -hmm. um, and um, she had her mask on, I had my mask on, we were sat, you know, apart, uh, a suitable distance, and uh, Julian asked me what I was um, asking for, and I described what I've just described to you. Um, and, you know, very usefully, she also asked me about my feelings about it, you know, and I told her I was worried uh, about these symptoms. Uh, and, um, you know, we, we had a chat, um, and then she prayed for me uh, and also prayed for these, you know, concerns. And um, I went away. And um, that night, I think uh, uh, I, I went to bed, you know, and tried to get comfortable. Uh, but at some point I fell asleep. And then in the morning when um, I went to lever myself out of bed, because that was what it was like at the time, I was, you know, positioning myself to get out of bed without causing too much uh, pain. And I'm sure lots of people can identify with this uh, when you reach a certain age. And uh, I was tentatively doing this. And, um, you know, I took my leg off the bed and put it on the floor. Mm. And I thought, oh, this feels different. And uh, then I put some weight on it. And I realized I could put some weight on it. And um, I was walking around, um, you know, um, in half disbelief but also in expectation because, I, as I say, I've, I've um, been up to the front of church quite a few times and received uh, prayers for healing. Uh, and I was really pleased and um, I was very happy to call Julian later that day yeah. to say to her, look, I feel tremendous. You know, I'm walking, I'm taking the dog for a walk. 
In fact, I called her from the dog walk yeah. uh, to say, you know, you'll be pleased to know uh, that your prayer worked. Excellent. That's wonderful news. Um, what would you, because I'm, I'm sure there are there are many that, that sort of uh, would be watching in this morning that face similar concerns and worries at the moment. We're, we're all um, uneasy with this this current sort of COVID restrictions. For anybody that's got something that they, they think they need prayer for, um, what would your advice be to them? Well, I'd say, you know, go and see your doctor, get in touch with your doctor and describe your symptoms um, and, um, you know, take whatever advice or prescriptions they give you, uh, but also step out and um, reach out to um, someone like Julian, who has a healing ministry at the Methodist Penance Methodist Church, uh, and ask for prayer. You know, um, you, you're not going to lose anything by it. And, you know, our opportunities at the moment are few and far between. So I would say, you know, grab those opportunities uh, where you can and uh, step out um, and um, ask the Lord for his healing touch because, um, you know, he does respond remotely. You know, you don't have to be there um, in the room with the person that's praying for you uh, to be healed. And, um, you know, I'm delighted that this uh, pain has gone away in my leg. And I'm very grateful to the Lord for that. Brilliant. Such good news. Such good news and good advice for, for people that are watching this morning. Well, thanks ever so much, Jason, for uh, for joining us this morning. And um, I'll hand back now to uh, let them carry on with the rest of the service. Another true story, this time honouring the Jesus way through seeking prayer. Thank you, Jason. Now for our third true story. Every day I pray for God's pace, promptings, priorities, patience, and above all, his presence. To my mind, the five Ps of active faith. So since lockdown in March, I have kept a journal, noting Bible verses, God encounters with various folk, so it's more reflective than a diary. And at the end of October, I read a Bible passage and felt God's nudge that this would be good for a future healing ministry service, duly noted. And I confess to also thinking whenever that could possibly be. But following the December interview and with Dave off sick for some weeks, I sensed it to be God's timing to offer a healing service almost a year since the last one here in PMC. God gave me a passage and when I checked this out and referred back to the October passage, they were the same. His confirmation, I believe. So to our true Bible story, found in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and John, the Lord having highlighted the Mark version. Thank you, David. Mark chapter six, starting to read at verse 45. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. He saw his disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. They were completely amazed for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. 
and wherever he went, into villages, towns, or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched him were healed. Amen. Hungry and depleted from giving out to many people, Jesus seeks to find a place where he and the disciples can rest and have some food. Verse 31 of chapter 6, Jesus says, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. They take a boat, but the eagle-eyed crowd work out where they will land and beat them to it. Now not only are Jesus and his disciples hungry, so are thousands more. First, with a captive audience, Jesus feeds them spiritually, and only then does he perform that glorious miracle and feed 5,000 men, let alone the women and children in the crowd, with five loaves and two fish, getting the disciples to tidy up the scraps before the crowd is dismissed. Surely Jesus has satisfied both spiritual and physical needs. For the crowds, yes, but what about that quiet place for a rest? Plan B. Jesus heads up the mountain to pray, whilst telling the disciples to get back in the boat and set off for Bethsaida. So here we have the disciples tired after what's already been a long day and without the physical presence of Jesus making their way to Bethsaida. Meantime, Jesus, although up the mountain praying, has not taken his eyes off the disciples on the lake. Did Jesus know there would be a storm brewing? Certainly, says one Bible commentator. Why did this happen then? For the disciples to learn to grow, to stretch their faith? Without a doubt, it was a very steep and exhausting learning curve for those first disciples. Often we feel the same as 21st century disciples. So what do we learn from this? Well, we learn that Jesus always has his eye on you and me. And there's no doubt that this past year has been full of storms, the crashing waves of the pandemic, climate change, and for us Brits, Brexit. Our national, international boat is in choppy waters. And what about us as individuals? What the Lord wants us to know for sure today is that he sees our personal concerns. His eye is always upon us. Anxiety is safe and continuing schooling. Worries about health issues that are on the NHS back burner. Employment losses and work scenes. Money matters, relationship strains from this overload of uncertainty. We are in that boat, sometimes alone, sometimes with others, and battling all sorts of storms. So where is Jesus in all this? Jesus had said for the disciples to go ahead of him, so they knew he would appear at some point. In fear, they see a ghost, inverted commas, walking on the water. In other words, another concern on top of all that frantic rowing, when in fact, he is their deliverer. When the storm is rife, we too may perceive only a further problem. And having just typed this, I confess to thinking, half praying, whatever kind of illustration will help me bring this truth to life. At that very point in my preparation, I had a phone call from a lady whose husband had not only been taken to hospital last autumn after a fall and injury to his leg, but since being home for a month, had caught a cold and been taken back into hospital with chest complications. This health storm for them had me with tears in my eyes and along with many others, much prayer was going up. Hearing her voice, I rather feared a further problem, but no, 
the long-standing diagnosis of scarring on the lungs had been revised to asthma. As, praise the Lord, no scarring had been found on X-ray. Still not A1, but much better than the initial diagnosis. Misdiagnosis or miracle? I certainly favour the latter. This news was so cheering, and we bless the Lord for being deliverer as I led our prayers over the phone. God is good all of the time. All of the time, God is good, and all God's people said, Hallelujah. Over 2020, we have had various bullet points given us to encourage us to have right behaviour to reduce the spread of COVID-19, to keep people safe. Too many words would confuse, here brevity counts, hands, face, space. In Mark chapter 6, verse 50, with the disciples crying out in fear, Jesus' three bullet points are, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid, as he climbs into the boat. The wind settles down and so do the disciples. The very presence of Jesus calms both the natural world and their emotions. One of the toughest aspects of COVID-19 is that we're not all in it together as certain groups of society have fared so much worse. And some people had huge battles before the national and international one charged into our lives. And some, of course, since. SOS, an even briefer directive, save our souls, has to be part of a healing service for each of us to be able to take courage, to be reassured it is I, and able to go with, do not be afraid. Such faith, and sure it may wobble, only comes through making a personal commitment to Jesus as Saviour and Lord, by confessing our sin, owning our need to be saved, in the spiritual sense. And a copy of Steps to Peace with God is available by post via contact with PMC office, who will pass your address on to me. I believe, as we look at the Lord's SOS, it has a second meaning to those unsettling times that we're now in. Save our sanity with so much of what we once enjoyed just swept to the side, it's easy to become downcast. One God-given home way of save our sanity is this, S for scripture. Make sure your day includes delving into God's word. Maybe hold a specific text in your mind as the day unfolds, and what better than take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid, giving strength and solace and security. Then O, oh, O oh for open your ears to the need of another and listen. One of the best ways to get beyond our own challenges is to contact someone else and hear their story. My sister-in-law is part of Premier Ra Christian radio team of counsellors and she endorses what we've all heard, that folk are lonely, may be bogged down in grief, despair, addiction. Undertaking shifts of two or four hours, Ruth says the phone never stops. There is always someone who needs a listening ear, a helpful response. Then S, S for sing. Some of us perhaps are unable to exercise our bodies outside in the fresh air. But the vast majority of us can exercise our lungs by singing in our own homes. Songs of worship, of course, are especially uplifting. And thankfully, the Lord is much more interested in sincere singing than if we're in perfect tune. Scripture, delve deeply. Open your ears to another story. 
sing your heart out. Three, save our sanity ways to encourage both ourselves and others as we journey through 2021. We all have a kingdom part to play and being an encourager brings Jesus that bit closer to us in his family and those who've yet to realize God's worth. Promoting healing and hope is a wonderful way to show off, inverted commas, the Jesus within us. I'm drawn to verse 54. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. As soon as we get out of our beds in the morning or leave our homes for essential business, do people recognize Jesus in us? The people back in Jesus' day accepted and celebrated him as healer. Their toing and froing is almost frenetic in those last verses of Mark chapter 6. That sense of not wanting to miss out is very obvious. They have recognized that the presence, the touch of Jesus is beyond any other gift. So will we, you and I, step out in faith Ask for prayer ministry. Know afresh the emboldening of our souls so that we shine for him in the darkness of troubled home, neighbourhood, world. Yes, of course, we need to continue to promote the government's hands, face and space. But as God's family in Jesus, his bullet points of Matthew chapter 6, verse 50 should surely undergird and grin through your life and mine. Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, dearest Lord, we so need you in these times of all sorts of challenges. Please help us not to rely on ourselves and others, but to seek your pace, promptings, priorities, patience, and presence. To be your encouragers, having let you encourage us through scripture, being there for others and singing. And all for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we reflect on God's message, let's lift up the Lord with singing the faith 544. You're my friend, and you are my brother, even though you are a king. You're my friend, and you are my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than any
the course again as the deer pants for the water. Sunday, Covenant Sunday, here in Penrith Methodist Church, Sue Graham led a meditation entitled, Just Listen, invoking each of us to focus on hearing God's voice before just doing. And Reverend Tim picked this up in his sermon. And holding on to that directive, Just Listen for God's Voice, Sarah leads our intercessions, our prayers for others, as we ask the Lord, what is your what is my particular part to enact these prayers over the coming week. And following Sarah's prayers, I invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer in whatever version you are comfortable with, although the, Lord, although the words of one version will appear on the screen. As God's people gathered remotely, but always in his presence, we pray. Lord, we need to put you at the centre of our lives. At this time, separated from our families and our friends, from our church and from much of what is familiar to us, we know that if we also separate ourselves from you, we will be lost. So as we petition for our world, we remember that you were the most loving, compassionate, surprising, gracious and humble leader ever to walk this earth and in your mercy we ask you to send your spirit of wisdom to the corridors of power and the hearts of the powerful we have almost forgotten that wars still rage that poverty drought and homelessness are still rife and we ask that you will guide the leaders who can affect change come to bring peace Come to relieve hunger. Come to ease suffering. Come to hold the hand of the needy. Most of our thoughts remain nearer to home and in our community where the virus dominates our lives, it seems dark and unending. But if we look beyond our houses and our immediate predicament, we can see the buds of new life on the trees and pushing through the ground. So we know that after the darkness will come light and life. Come to those who are weary from long hours of difficult work. Come to all who are anxious and fearful of what lies beyond their door. Come to all who have the virus and with it a range of symptoms. Come to all who continue to work to serve and to give of themselves. Come to the unemployed with all their uncertainties. In our grief and confusion of heart, help us to trust in your goodness. And when our understanding fails, help us to find peace in your loving mercy, knowing that you stand alongside each of us and that we can lean in for reassurance. Let us bring to you every individual situation causing us pain.
Precious Father, in your mercy, hold us close. Amen. Now I am 
as we come towards the close of worship. Thank you for your contributions. And if you're questioning, what have I offered? Let us each remember we are in this together. Every contribution matters and helps God's kingdom move forward to his glory. So before the blessing, I reiterate my offer to pray for you over the phone. And if you want to speak to a minister during the coming days, please contact PMC office. We are here to listen. The blessing from two Thessalonians. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Amen. And all God's people said, Hallelujah. <laughs>